What is going on everybody? Aaron here with AV Astronomy. Welcome back. And if this is your first time watching, thanks for stopping by. So I got to thinking it has probably been three or four months, maybe more, since the last time I just did a vlogging video of me doing an imaging session. So just going to take be taking it easy tonight and wanted to run through an imaging session. I'll put some highlights on some settings that I use, the type of scope and camera system I'm using tonight, anything I can do to, of course, help you guys get the most out of your images. And this evening we're going to be imaging IC410, also known as the Tadpole Nebula. This thing looks amazing. This is a target I've been wanting to go after for quite some time now. And uh, clear skies at the right times making it happen. I really wanted to shoot this tonight with my QHY 165C camera. However, I'm still waiting on the L Extreme filter to come in. In the meantime, I don't really have a duo band or narrow band filter yet to do that kind of imaging. The only thing I have currently is a CLS filter for my digital SLR, which actually works pretty well. Uh, not as good as the L Extreme, of course, but I can still get decent results. So I've got everything set up and the system running but let's go ahead and take a look outside i'll show you what i've got rigged up and we'll get this thing started So with this particular camera telescope combination, this is what I'm going for. I'm going for five minute subframes at ISO 3200 with the SkyTech CLS filter and my HA modded Canon 77D. If you're not sure what the best ISO for your camera is, I got a video, I'll put a link in the description below called ISO Variance and Why It Matters to help you choose the best ISO for your imaging session. Also, when shooting faint targets like this, you're going to want to maximize as much data SNR as you can. So imaging with a faster scope like a Mac Newt, regular Newtonian or fast refractor, or of course, ideally something like a RASA would really help you out with a target like this. So how about we go outside, check on the system, and let's see what kind of subframes we're getting at this point. Make sure the clouds haven't rolled in or something crazy like that. You never know. When you're doing astrophotography, anything can happen. I can't tell you how many nights I've had where I've had everything set up, ready to go. It's running, or at least I thought it was running. Something was wrong with the scope. Something was wrong with the camera, the computer, all three. You, you name it. It's, it's a never-ending just... It's crazy. Anyway, let's go outside and check this thing out. Let's see how it's running. Check this out guys. This is one subframe of IC410. This isn't even auto stretched. This is just straight out of the camera going into APT. Uh, really promising data coming in through here. I just hope the sky stay clear long enough for me to get enough frames here to make something worthwhile. So pretty awesome results so far. Really excited about that. As you can see, my dithering is doing okay. You know, ideally you want to stay under one arc second per pixel, but this is, you know, a lot of that depends on your image scale. Uh, with this particular setup, my image scale is like 1.1. So as long as I stay under one, my subframe should come out pretty good. Ideally, I'd like to be much lower than this. And I have found that with the OAG, I do get better results, but it just was not going to work out with this setup because of back focus requirements. So that's looking pretty good. Man, those those test subs, oh, those subframes are looking awesome. I cannot wait to stack these and get a final image here. You can see the little little tadpoles right in there as well. Awesome. Now, a lot of you have been asking me to do a video on 
calibration frames. Are they necessary or not? And it's something I'm, I'm going to be working on here shortly. Um, for instance, this session, because I'm using an SLR and temperature does vary throughout the evening, I won't be using calibration frames. However, it is a pretty cool night, so the noise, the um, thermal noise should be relatively low. Um, it's right around high 30s, I think 38, 39 degrees Fahrenheit. So that helps a lot. But the other part of it is, you know, that's not the only aspect of noise. So heavy dithering, I have found, goes a long way in mitigating a lot of the noise that you cope with. In fact, and I've said it once earlier in the video, and I'm going to say it again now, but as soon as I can start imaging again, with my QHY165C, I'm gonna do a session with calibration frames and then edit that same image without, just to show the difference. I've, I've done this before, but not to the extent, I wanna really put it through a, a solid and fair test, so uh, I'm waiting for that filter to come in so I can do this test properly. But I'm pretty confident that with a cooled camera, and proper dithering and if you're not sure what I mean by proper dithering it takes more than just turning on dither and telling it to dither there's there's a certain amount of distance that the dither movements need to be you definitely want to have it on random and you don't want to use spiral I've done this before and it, for me at least it creates a kind of a crosshatch weird pattern in your stacked image because it does this spiral pattern so stay away from that it didn't help me out, and I don't know that it's the best way to do that. I have found that random dithering and using a simple dithering calculator, which takes the, uh, the image scale of your camera and guide camera, I'm sorry, your, your guide camera and guide scope, and your imaging camera and main scope, and you divide the two and then divide that amount by the amount of pixels you want it to move, which generally you want it to move at least 30 pixels is what I have found to be a good number. So I'll, I have a whole separate video on that actually called how to dither and do it right. So I'll put a link in the description below for that one as well. But these are all things to help you that will help you get the most out of your imaging session. So just another point in there I wanted to run by you guys. I'm gonna step back outside and see how this session is going. And wouldn't you know, guys, look at that. Tag gum. Clouds have rolled in. And that's PhD freaking out because he can't see the guide star anymore. That's just how it goes sometimes. So it looks like this imaging session is going to be cut short tonight. I don't even know how many good frames I got out of this. I, I was on, I believe, uh, image 19. So I will stack whatever I've got to give you guys a at least a preview of what to expect from this but it's certainly not gonna be a finished product by any means but anyway this is kind of a bummer but this is this is the hobby this is how this thing goes um, man can't believe that rolled in already anywho I guess let's run in get this thing stacked up and let's see what kind of final image we got
Well, guys, I don't know about y'all, but I feel like that image came out pretty darn good considering the conditions, which I didn't mention earlier, poor scene conditions because of the constantly changing weather and only in just over an hour of data. I got 15 usable subframes out of that and I was lucky to get that. And I'm going to show you guys the final result here in just a second, but I was really surprised to see the quality of data from just an hour in the subject. And again, I think a lot of that has to do with the dithering. And you, of course, it's not just all about dithering. You got to have a camera that's sensitive to HA data and you got to have a scope that can pick up good detail, but all that doesn't you know, those other two things don't really have an impact on noise as much as dithering does. So I think that goes a long way. And I got to tell you, I'm really excited to see what this finished project is going to look like once I get another four or five hours put into it. But anyway, I'm going to go ahead and show you guys. We'll go ahead and pull the curtains, show you guys the final image. Hope you guys enjoy. Also, if you're interested in any of the gear I use or I recommend, I've got some links down in the description below to OPT Telescopes, telescope supply company here in America that has an excellent selection and a great team of people willing to help you out any question you have. And I've always found their service to be fast and courteous. So. If you're looking for gear, looking for where to start out, I'll put some links in the description down below to help you get you started on the right foot. Also, if you guys ever have any recommendations, ideas, or things that you'd like me to do videos on or reviews on, let me know and I'll see what I can do. In the meantime, God bless. Keep on looking up. Keep on seeking. Until next time, clear skies.